Hey guys, it's Bethany with ABQ Creations here with another tutorial for you. Today I'm going to show you how to make this adorable Celtic weave stitch hat. The thing I love most about this hat is it's such a fantastic stitch. It's great for either men or women or children. So it's a great option for everyone in the family. The stitch also works up to be quite thick, which is perfect for these Wisconsin winners. I also have a messy bun version. If you would like to see how to complete that, then I will link to that video down below and in the description. Make sure you watch how to create the body in this video first, and then head over to watch that one to finish up the hat if that's what you're looking for. Grab your supplies and let's get started. In order to follow along with this tutorial, you will need yarn. Today I'm using impeccable glitter, and I'm using that in the color gold. Scissors. A crochet hook. For this tutorial, I used a size 6 millimeter. If you crochet tighter, you're definitely going to want to up it to a 6.5 millimeter. A needle for weaving in your ends. Optional is a stitch marker and a fur topper. I will link to some of these down below because I just think they are so adorable, but you can also make your own topper out of yarn or you can leave the top off completely on there. To get started with our Celtic weave stitch hat, we're going to work up the brim first. In order to do that, you have to decide how wide you want your brim. I'm going to make this one a little bit thinner, so I'm only going to chain on five stitches. If you want to make it thicker so that it can go over your ears, you can make it wider by stitching on more. Next, we're going to slip stitch into our second chain from our hook. And I always work into the back loop only. It's the little bump on top. It just makes it look a little bit cleaner and it'll make our join easier down the road. Slip stitch into the next stitch and each stitch across. Chain one, turn your work. And we're gonna work in the back loops only. So as you're looking down on it, you can see this B. We're gonna work into the back loop only and we will slip stitch all the way across. Chain one, turn your work, and repeat this for as long as you would like your brim to be. So size it up around your head. If you want it a little tighter, then it'll pull a little bit more when it's on your head. I like mine to sit a little bit looser so that the stitches stay close together, so I'll make mine a little bit longer. I'll meet back with you once I have mine completed. I have completed my rows of ribbing for my brim. Again, I wanted a narrow one, so this is why I only did five or five chains and then four across. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna join, and I did about 33 ribbed rows on each side, so 66 rows total for my ribbing. And yours might be different, and that's okay. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna join, and this is how we wanna do this. I did chain one at the end of my work as well. So I'm gonna go in to the back loop of this, and then I'm going to go right into the front loop. You can see here's the bottom of our, our first row, and I'm gonna go in this front loop. And we're gonna slip stitch those two together. And we're going to do the same thing all the way across. So we're going to find our back loop and insert our hook. And go into this front loop here. And do a slip stitch. We're now going to chain two, and this first chain two is going to count as a double crochet. We now have to work in the round, and we have to figure out how many we want to do for our stitches. So you have to keep in mind that for the Celtic weave stitch, it has to be in multiples of four. 
So for my hat, I'm gonna do 68 stitches. If you're doing it for a guy or for somebody who has like an extra large head, then I would get up into the 70s um, and maybe go, maybe go with 76. You can kind of play around with it and see what works. But for me, I'm gonna just stick to um, 68 stitches. So I'm gonna count this as my first double crochet. And you're just gonna pick up stitches like this. You're gonna go all the way across. Now, since I have um, about 66, I have 66 rows of ribbing, counting the front and the back, uh, I can work into every single one all the way around plus add two. So I'll add one at the beginning and kind of in the middle then. So I'll meet back with you after you pick up however many stitches you need in multiples of four. Okay, so I have my 68 stitches and that does include this first uh, chain two. So it's the chain two plus 67 stitches for me. Again, you might need more, you might need less, and that's okay. But just keep it in multiples of four. So now we're gonna slip stitch to the top of our chain two. And then we're gonna chain two. I'm going to begin my Celtic weave stitch. I'm not going to explain the stitches too much here. I do have a tutorial and I'll link to that um, that shows you in a much slower way how to do the Celtic weave stitch. So, okay, so we're gonna do um, into our, we're gonna skip our chain two and then we're gonna skip these first two stitches and we're gonna work a front post treble crochet here. Do another front post treble crochet into this next stitch. And then we're gonna go back and work into these stitches that we, we skipped over. So into this stitch, not our chain two, we'll save that for the end. We're gonna come back and work into this first post and do a front post treble crochet. and then do a front post treble crochet around the second stitch. So we're gonna do that again, and we're gonna repeat all the way around from here. So we're gonna skip two stitches. We're gonna do a front post treble crochet into this third stitch. and then go back and work into the two that we skipped. So go ahead and continue this all the way across for the round and then I will meet back with you at the start of round two. And there I have worked my last stitch of this round. Now we're going to slip stitch, but instead of doing it into the top of our chain two, we're going to slip stitch into our first treble post, um, our first front post treble crochet, excuse me. So this is about what you should have so far. Okay, now this is where the repeat actually starts. So we're going to chain two at the beginning and now we're gonna skip the first four stitches we're gonna work these last two on our way back at the very end of this round so we're gonna skip our four stitches and then we're gonna work into you can you kind of have to dig these out a little bit but you can see these two stitches here so we're gonna work a front post treble crochet into here And then we're gonna work a front post treble crochet into the next stitch. 
Again, you might have to pull them up a little bit. And now this is where it can get complicated for working in the round. We're going to do a front post treble crochet into these two stitches. However, we're not gonna go over our entire work. We're gonna go behind these two stitches and work into them. So you might wanna pull it up a little bit and that helps. If you Again, if you need more time on this and you need to really see what I'm doing, um, I will have a link to my video tutorial on the Celtic weave stitch below. Okay, so again, we're gonna go behind these two stitches but in front of our work Pull up that loop and complete our front post treble crochet. So we're going to repeat this all the way across. So with the next one we're going to skip, instead of skipping four stitches though, this is where the repeat begins. Instead of skipping four stitches, we're just going to skip these two and then we're going to work our front post treble crochet just as we did before. And then again, coming back to these two stitches, and we're gonna work behind the ones we just made and still stay in front of our work. Go ahead and continue this across and I will meet up with you at the end of the round. As you approach the end of the round, you can see where the chain two was. And this is what I meant when I said you're gonna work into the first and second stitch at the end of the round. So here I'm gonna work into the very first stitch. And then the second stitch. back and work these two that I skipped. And then to close it up a little bit we're going to slip stitch to this first front post treble crochet. We're going to chain two and this is our second row of the repeat. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to repeat this row and the last row um, until it's the length that you would like it to be to where you want to start your decreases. So for here we're going to get again skip the first four stitches and we're going to work our front post treble crochet. Next front post treble crochet. Now we're going to work as usual. So, doing our front post treble crochet, we're going to pull up these stitches that we skipped stitch number three and four of the row. And we're going to work a front post treble crochet. And then work our next front post treble crochet. And then from here, we're going to just skip two stitches. We've already worked into these. So these are the next two that we're going to work into. We're going to skip this one and this one, work into here, and then go back and work in the ones that we skipped. So just go ahead and continue this all the way until the end of the round. And here's the last two stitches of this round. Now with this, you're gonna to start to notice that your chain two does get caught up in the mix here. So you're gonna see that. But what I like to do is just connect it um, to my last stitch. And I'll show you what I mean. 
So when working around this post, instead of just working around this, I work around both of these. And that's all you have to do. It'll hide it. So again, we just slip stitch to the first front post treble crochet of our round. And then you continue on. So we're going to continue the last two pat or the last two rows until it gets as long as you'd like until you're going to start your decrease right around the crown. So go ahead and repeat those and I'll meet back with you to show you how we work up our decrease. Okay, so I've worked mine up this far. I have done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 rounds total um, after my double crochet. So 12 rounds after that point. And now I'm ready to start decreasing. I was going, I was contemplating putting on another two rows onto this to fit myself, but I kind of have a small head. So if you have a larger head, you might want to add on two more rows. But I would recommend stopping after this last row um, where you can see in the pattern that I had to, I connected here and I did the harder row. I just finished up the harder row where I had to work behind these stitches. It just makes it easier for the decrease. You can also decrease on the other row too. It doesn't matter too much. I just like to make my job easier. So that's why I'm doing it this way. So in order to do your decrease, you're gonna start your rows the same way pretty much. So we're going to skip our first four stitches, we're going to work into these, but this time we're going to decrease. So we're going to start our treble crochet, but then instead of finishing it, we're not going to yarn over and pull through these. We're going to actually yarn over and insert into the next treble crochet, front post treble crochet, excuse me. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so now we have to go back and we're gonna work these and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just doing decreases and we're gonna decrease on every stitch. So that's the thing about this, you do wanna make sure you give yourself enough height on your hat because we're gonna be decreasing on every single stitch. So I yarned over, I'm gonna insert into the next treble crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over and pull through two. So go ahead and continue that decrease all the way around and then I'll meet back with you once the row is done or the round. Coming up to the end of the round, we're going to finish off our stitches. And we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch again. Okay, so after chaining two, we're going to kind of try to keep the pattern going. But this time, instead of doing a treble crochet, we're going to do a double, a front post double crochet. So Instead of skipping four stitches, we're skipping two because these have been combined. And so we're going to work into this stitch back here and we're going to do a front post double crochet. We won't need the stitch to be as tall because we don't have as many stitches this round. Okay, and now we're going to go back and we'll work in this one, but again, we have to go behind to work into this stitch. And it's going to be, it will be a little bit tighter because of it being a double crochet. Hard habits. Okay, so it's gonna be a double, a front post double crochet, but again, we have to go behind this stitch. It's a little harder to work behind that one because it's a double crochet instead of a treble crochet. But then we're just gonna kind of continue that crisscross pattern around. So again, we're going to skip this one and work into this decrease here. But again, it's just gonna be a double, a front post double crochet. Then we're gonna go behind this stitch, but in front of our work, to do a front post double crochet here. So continue that pattern around and then I'll show you the final decrease round. 
Here's our chain two, we're gonna work right under that. And there we have it. You can see it's it's definitely shorter stitches, but it'll lead nicely into our final decrease and closing up our hat. So go ahead and again, we're gonna slip stitch to the first stitch of the round. And now, yet again, we're just gonna do all decreases. And this is where it'll get a little bit easier. Um, we can just, you can chain one or two depending on, I, I usually get a lot of height out of mine, so sometimes when I'm just doing front post um, double crochets. I just do one and it's fine. Okay, so there are, like I said, a few ways to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to skip this st first stitch and again I'll work into it at the end. And then where it comes behind, I'm going to start this and I'm going to connect it right to this front post. And we're just gonna do decreases like that all around. So I'm gonna go from here and start it off and decrease into here. And this way the stitches that are facing each other anyway get pulled in together. So go ahead and finish that all the way around and I'll meet back with you at the end. Here's the final stitch and you can see it because of the chain that we did there. So I'm gonna go around both of them. up. I'm going to slip stitch in here. I'm going to cut off a tail that's long enough to close up this hole on the top. So I cut off this amount of length of yarn. It'll allow me to close up my gap here and um, I'm just going to pull that through. It'll allow me to close up my hole and it will allow me to add this topper. You can either add a fur topper or you can leave it without a topper. Um, if you're doing the messy bun look, I have another video. I will link to that. Uh, so if you want to finish that off. But I really like these. These have this little elastic band. So I'm going to stitch through that and close up the top. When closing up our gap, I like to go from the outside. Um, the I'm sorry, the front loop only. Instead of doing all of them, it kind of closes it up a little bit. But you can do whatever you'd like. So I just kind of come up from underneath like this. We just pull it tight like so and this is what the top is going to look like. So again if you want to just leave it, it we'll pull tight and then we're going to tie our knot And I'm going to weave in the ends just a little bit before I add my topper. So again, you can leave it like this which is really cute. Or you can go ahead and add a top. So I'm gonna add my top right now. So 
this will be a little bit trickier so I'm going to go off camera to do this but basically I'm going to have to stitch around a bunch of times and keep going in and out of this and then stitch it down to the hat. Okay so it's kind of movable but it's secured down pretty good. You can see some of the hairs kind of pile over and get in the way but that's okay. So now I'm just going to secure this off, tie in my ends and weave them into the inside of the hat and then it's complete. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate all of the support. If you can do me a favor and please go ahead and give this a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on all of my current projects and my patterns. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me down below and please share this video with any other crochet friends that you might have. Thanks guys. Have a wonderful day.